All right, guys, I am almost at the end of the section 12.2 packet. We're almost at the end of the year. We're almost done with all this e-learning garbage. Okay, um, hang with me. Let's talk a little bit more about what happens when your um, scatter plot is not linear. See, we've got some sort of a curve situation here. What is this curve happening? So we've got a bunch of M&Ms. You're playing a game. You're really bored because you've been stuck at home just like me. Um, I actually do have a bunch of M&Ms here, and I love M&Ms, so maybe I actually am playing this game. Whatever, you dump all the M&Ms out, and you eat the ones with the M facing up. So when you expect like half of them probably to have the M facing up and the other half probably roughly to be facing down. So you eat them and then you put all the bag, all the M&Ms back in the bag and you do the same thing. Dump them out, eat the ones with the M's facing up, um, the ones with the M's facing down, go back in the bag. You continue playing this game. Um, here's our data. Course, meaning the first time I dumped the M&Ms out, there were 30 remaining. The second time I dumped them out, there were 13 remaining, whatever. I'm no scientist, but I think this is like a half-life situation, kind of. It's not exactly half, but we're expecting it to be roughly half. And that's why we've got this exponential decay type of curve here. Okay, so that's not linear, so I can't do my linear stuff with it. Um, what I've done, if you want to do some of this stuff in the calculator, it's not necessary, but I've written over here, um, because this is an exponential decay looking graph, that's why I'm going to try and take the natural log of the y value and see if that straightens it out. And so you can see what I've done here is I have regraphed this data using the same x value, which is the course number, so 1 through 7. But instead of using 30 and 13 and 10 and whatever, I have done the natural log of all of those. I'm just wondering if that is going to straighten it out. And that was what I was told to do here in step one. Um, take the natural log of the number of M&Ms, so that's the natural log of the Y value. And that gives me these Y values instead. And so that's why my graph here now looks a lot more linear. Wow, interesting. You can do this in the calculator, FYI. You can type this into list one and this into list two. And then remember, if you go up and highlight list three, you can enter in a um, command and you can just type LN list two and it will do all of these for you. It's only seven numbers, so it's not that difficult to do it yourself and just type in these decimals if you want to. But remember, your calculator is very powerful and very smart. It can do stuff like that for you. Um, why is the last observation in the table not included? Because when I had zero M&Ms left, remember when you natural log zero, that's undefined, you can't do it. So that's why there's only um, six dots here as opposed to the original seven. Just FYI. Um, remember to define all your variables. X is the course number. Y is the candies remaining. Why is it reasonable to use an exponential model? Well, because the original scatter plot, as you could see, was curved. Um, therefore, the exponential model, hey, this is a vocab word. You should have this in your reading guide. That means you do the natural log of y versus x. This is called, by definition, an exponential model when you natural log the y value and use the regular x value. It is defined, again, um, vocab word. This will be a multiple choice question somewhere. I'm positive this is called an exponential model. Um, pop quiz in your reading guide. What is it when you natural log the y and the x? Brief pause for dramatic effect. When you natural log the y and the x, it's called a power model. Those are the two vocab words you need to have written down. See your reading guide. Remember, you guys, now if ever is a great time to read the textbook. Okay, rant over. The original scatter plot was curved, therefore the exponential model, which is when I natural logged y versus regular x, has a very strong negative linear relationship. Very, very nice straight looking line that we have here. Anyways, moving on. Give the equation. Here's some more stuff, some data. Um, give the equation. Here's our regression output. And read really carefully. It does say natural log remaining. That's the natural log of the Y, the remaining M&Ms. That was the Y value. Natural log here is very important. This tells you that this is the exponential model, not the original scatter plot that was curved. Okay, this is the one that I drew up here. Anyways, remember, this is your y-intercept, and this is your um, slope, and so that's how I'm writing the equation. One thing to be really careful of is remember that it's not regular y-hat, it's natural log y-hat, because we natural logged all the y-values. 
Um, here's my x and my y defined again. Just FYI, if you wanted to play around with this in the calculator, the ownership and the learning and you know capability expansion type of stuff, for those of you that are interested, that's kind of on you at a, at a time like right now. But this power model, which is when you natural log the y and you natural log the x, you can try that out in your calculator. And it will give you this as a uh, y-intercept. This is your slope, so here's our regression line. We've got an r and an r squared. And look at this r squared here from the regression. Remember when you square root that, you get r. This is an extremely strong linear relationship. And actually, this should be a negative right here. Remember how when you square root um, the r squared, you have to think positive or negative? Um, and because this is a negative slope here, this should be a negative sign with my R. So make a note about that. Um, I am going to change that really, really big right here. That should be negative. Found a typo in my own notes. Okay, fixed it. Both correlations are really strong, but the exponential model fits better than the power model. I'm still assuming that if I were to graph the power model, I would still get a negative here. I didn't um, graph it. You can in your calculator if you want, but I was lo I lost my negative sign right here. My bad. Make sure you got that down. Anyways, um, both of them are really strong correlations, but this one is stronger. So we're going to go with the exponential model. Okay, looking at our residual plot, what do we know about the appropriateness of the model? So remember, um, one of the things I love about this section is that it reviews a lot of important stuff from chapter three. Chapter three was such a long time ago, and it was a really random like chapter that didn't have anything to do with any of the other chapters. So we got to go back and review that, which is why we're doing a really good job here in chapter 12 of doing that. Um, remember our residual plot, we're supposed to see a consistent random scatter. Um, we do, we have values above and below the axis and there's not really a curve or a pattern. However, maybe it might be interesting to point out the fact that these two are really close to the line. So maybe, and by line I mean zero residual, that means they were really, really close to our LSRL where as here, here, and here, they were much farther away. Um, that may mean that our LSRL is better at predicting for larger values of x due to the very small residuals. If you think about that in terms of the M&Ms, when you don't have that many M&Ms left, it's easier to predict how many of them are gonna have an M facing up when you dump out the bag. So I guess that makes sense in context here, okay? But those are a couple things to get copied down about our residual plots. All right, moving on to the second page. Um, what we are going to do here is we're gonna look at um, some data about the nine planets, including Pluto. For those of you scientists out there, I know that's controversial right now, but we're just gonna go with it because it's in our book. Um, we have data on the distance from the sun and the period of revolution. And so what you need to look at really closely here is make sure that you're reading the axes really carefully. This is regular distance versus natural log of period. That makes it an exponential model. Remember, by definition, if you use the regular x value with the natural log of the y value, that is called an exponential model. In this one, we have natural logged both the x and the y. That, by definition, is a power model. You need to have those definitions. You'll for sure see that in multiple choice. Anyways, um, look at when we did the exponential model. It still was definitely curved. This looks like a uh, log graph situation. The power model, really, really straight. Okay, so this one is going to be a better one to use. Explain why a power model will be more appropriate. Um, scatter plot for the power model, which is the natural log of both the x and the y, shows a linear relationship. But when we just did the exponential model, this one, it was still curved. Okay, so we're going to go with the power model here. And we've got our, um, what's this called? Our regression output. Remember, this is your y-intercept and this is your slope. And so that's why I'm going to write my equation that looks like so. I've defined my x and my y. And remember that this is a power model, so you need to have a natural log with your y hat, and you also need to have a natural log with your x. Okay. Um, predict the period of revolution for Eris, which, again, I love stats, you guys. Who the hell even knew what Eris was? I didn't until I looked at this problem. Apparently this is a big star, which may or may not be... Um, controversially um, considered a planet to some people, I guess. Anyways, um, we have this data, um, which is 102.15 AU, that stands for astronomical units um, from the sun, and show your work. So if we're plugging in 102.15 to the X, 
here is our equation that we're using. It's the same equation from right here, but I'm plugging in 102.15 to the x. Type this whole thing into your calculator and you get natural log of y equals 6.9. I don't care what natural log of y is, I want to know what y is. Do you remember how to get y by itself, algebra 2, when it's stuck together with a natural log? What you do is you exponentiate both sides e to the whatever, e to the whatever. That is what gets rid of the e and the natural log. So that's why what I did here is I wrote e to the 6.93927 equals y hat. And when you crunch this number, remember e is 2.718. You also have an e button in your calculator and you're exponentiating it here. Um, that's how we get 1032.02. .02. So again, you got to know a little bit of Algebra 2 stuff in order to be able to solve for y when it is stuck together with a y hat. Um, it's called exponentiating both sides. Um, hopefully you remember that from Algebra 2. There's also an explanation in the book if you want to go into the reading guide. Um, I put an example in there as well. So um, that is a brief overview of some Algebra 2 work happening within this stats stuff. But let's go on to our last part. We've got a residual plot here for the linear regression. Um, do we think our predictions are too high, too low, or just right? And so our prediction in part C, which was um, the 102 whatever astronomical units. Remember what I'm doing is I'm natural logging both the x value and the y value. So my x value was 102.15, but when I natural log it, I get 4.626, which is a little bit bigger than 3. So that puts us in this area of the residual plot. Here's 3, here's 4. Um, I'm somewhere in this category. And what I'm doing here is I'm recognizing a little bit of a pattern on this residual plot. This is not a good-looking residual plot. It's not supposed to have any sort of a pattern or curve. Um, and that tells us, again, I skipped part 1, but a linear model may not be appropriate here. Just keep that in mind. Um, but what I can do, because this residual plot is not a consistent random scatter, it has somewhat of a curve or a pattern or a trend, I can actually make some predictions here. And so what you need to think about here is that we do have these dots right here. These are all considered underestimates. And so let me stop and pause and think a little bit about that. This is, again, some Chapter 3 review, which is really important to finish our chapter here with. Um, these are underestimates, and this is why is because maybe you're thinking, but wait, the dots are above zero, so wouldn't that be considered an overestimate? Not exactly. Remember when we have all of these like dots that look like so, and we draw a line through it like this? This is a positive residual, right? That is a positive residual. However, where is the estimation? This is the estimation down here, right? When you have a positive residual like this, it actually means that you estimated below because remember the line is the estimate. Okay, so that is something that I've seen trip people up in multiple choice questions also is like thinking about a positive residual in terms of an overestimate. It's actually the opposite of that. Again, so one more time, remember we've got a, a best fit line, an estimation line, and sometimes the dots fall above it and sometimes the dots fall below it. But when the dot falls above the estimation, the estimation is down here. The estimation is underneath the dot, which gives you a positive residual. So these are considered under estimations. Okay. Let me go back to my rant here on part three. Eris' distance, 102.15, is outside the range of distances we use to calculate our LSRL, and we shouldn't extrapolate. Okay, so I really don't know if I can predict beyond four years here. And the LN of 102.15 was more than four. That is an extrapolation. So again, you guys, there's some really, really, really important things in this chapter that go back to chapter three. So while we may not see a lot of chapter 12 on the AP exam, we're not exactly sure what that's going to look like yet. I do know that there's definitely going to be chapter three stuff on here, and this is so cumulative. Okay, so anyways, that is it for this video. Um, there is one more t-test on the last page that is going to be my last video other than that please send me some questions you guys hope you're having a great day i miss you i'll see you soon hopefully